I was going to ask you about your son. Hey, when you hired an attorney for this guy, because the first thing I, w- I was trying to explain to you folks, and, but you didn't really know me back then, is I kept saying to you, he cannot testify. He's incompetent. It's like getting somebody from an insane asylum to testify because at 15 years old, his brain is not fully developed and he doesn't know the concepts from right or wrong. It's the whole thing that I'm doing with, with my kid and uh, Frank. I said, I said to Mike the cop and the investigator and the district attorney guy, I said, you do know you're taking testimony from an incompetent witness. You do know that, right? You, you, you know, if Frank's got an attorney that's worth a two cents, they're going to throw that, <laughs> that witness out on their ass. And it, it happens to be my daughter. I said, do you understand that you can't use somebody from an insane asylum to testify against somebody? You, you can't. You know, she's, she's, she's a, she's a, uh, they, 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 actually, they call them, you know, uh, up until you're 18 years old, they actually still call you infants, like you're infantile. You know, you, you behave, uh, you know, with not, you know, adult characteristics or qualities, infantile. It doesn't mean that you, you know, she, she wets her, her pants and she needs a diaper. It's infantile. You know, she's incompetent. You know, she, she can't care for herself. You can't let her loose into the world and thinks that, well, she knows how to get a debit card, she knows how to go get a, a cell phone, she knows how to go uh, or rent a car, she knows how to go uh, get a hotel room. No, she doesn't have to do any of that stuff. You know, you still need mom and dad to lead her, you know, from one end of town to the other end of town. Like, oh, this is how you survive, this is how you make money, this is how you get job skills. She's incompetent. So that's the question I wanted to ask you. How in all that holy hell didn't you explain? I put. I don't know if I, you know, I, I might not have known you at that time, but I, I go bananas when anybody tries to use somebody who's incompetent as a, as a witness. You know, that's, that's a, a very passionate thing that I, I, I drill. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me, you know, you use the husband against the wife, or you use the son against the father, or you use, use the minor child? They're not confident. They, they, there's a trust relationship there, or there's, you know, they, they, they can't testify. You know, they don't, you know, it, it's, it's private information. It, it happened in so it's, it's okay, let me put it this way. You've got prisoners of war. There's the Geneva Convention. There's only certain things that you're allowed to ask a prisoner of war. Your name, rank, serial number. And that's all they have to give you. Name, rank, serial number. What's, what's your kid's name? You know, you, know, you know, what's his social security number? And what's his rank? I'm his son. My name is Ian. This is my social security number. I'm his son. What? Geneva Convention, man. Terms of war. I just have to give you a name, rank, and serial number. I don't have to give you anything else. That's all I'm going to give you. Well, don't you know. You want me to turn, be treasonous against my people, against my nation. So you can't force somebody to disclose troop movements, who's the name of your commander, uh, where is the troops last stationed, uh, where is the troops going to go next, uh, can you tell us um, what they're thinking about doing uh, next October? Do you have any information what's, what, what you guys are going to be doing next week? Next week, I believe you're going to do something like called the Tet Offensive. You've you got to disclose us. You, you have to tell us, or we're going to waterboard you. We're going to pull your nails out. We're going to torture your family back home. No, even, even rules of war. You cannot force somebody to disclose information that's private, that's in a trust. He's a private in the Army. He's a sergeant. He's a captain. He's a general. There's a trust relationship there. You can't order or force a man to break the trust. It's, it's the most valuable thing we have as human beings on planet Earth is the ability to trust each other. So how in all that fucking holy did that fucking attorney not convey that to the grand jury or the prosecutor that, hey, that's the end, there's a social security number, and his rank is that of son. Other than that, you can't disclose, you can't force, because this is under this man's domestic authority. Just like Hillary Clinton said, we would love to go into Syria and kill King Hussein, whatever King, whatever his name is, King Sodom. I don't, I don't know whatever his name is, for gassing his women and children over there. But according to the domestic authority doctrine, that's known and recognized as a legitimate rule of law throughout the entire planet, we cannot cross a border unless we're invited in by the leader, by the daddy, by the Führer, by the A number one guy. We can't cross the threshold. Everybody knows that. That's why King Charles got beheaded. We all know it. It's a basic rule of law. There you go. So how in all that's holy did you spend more than, hopefully more than 50 bucks on an attorney that didn't know how to do that? Well, I I was learning your videos at the time. I didn't have 
that specific information. But what I will say is this. All these attorneys, especially at this level, they all pee in the same toilet. They all eat at the same places as these district attorneys. And they are just one and the same. It was just before you knew me that you, you got this attorney, or did you get him after you knew me? I, I was learning the videos. I didn't know you at the time. I was learning the videos. I was just trying to get up to speed as fast as I could at the time. You, just, you didn't know me personally, you saying. You didn't start talking to me, saying. No. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. And when and then don't forget when they when they pulled this shit at the at the school, I mean, the biggest part of me was angry. You know, how could you do this to a child? Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it's just. That's oh, see, that's the difference between you and me. When they do that to my kid, when they did that to Cole when he was born, I just smile. And they said, what? I just smile like crazy. It's like, did you just threaten me? He was like, oh, wait a second. Do you work for the county? Because they're nearly bankrupt. Do you get a check from the state? Because they're rich. They're worth $38 billion. We're state employees. Oh, thank God. I'm going to be so rich. Go ahead. Just just keep trespassing. Just do it. Oh, oh I'm going to make so much effing money. <laughs> they're like, what? I said, oh, go ahead. Just trespass. Oh, that little bundle of joy. That my little bundle of property on the other side of the window, that little bundle of joy ain't there in the morning where I lied them tonight. I said, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to own, I'm gonna, uh, own this state. That's when I'm done. See, like I said, you get angry. I, And that's what I should have said, and that's what I said to myself. You know, I say to myself, Carl, what kind of demented clown are you that uh, when somebody's threatening to take your kid, you see, oh, wow, this is the golden opportunity to take control of the state. <laughs> This is a golden opportunity to be the richest man here in the state. How come I don't look at it in a form of panic? And how come I'm not crying and jumping up and down and screaming and getting all emotional and threatening to hurt people when I just smile and go, did you just threaten me? And you, you're a public servant, right? right? You, you, okay. You, you work for the county and the state. State. Oh, sweet Jesus, look. I'm... You just, you just threaten, oh, my God, you just threaten a member of the public. Oh, you're a public servant. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. You know, you know like, I, like I said, even in the year 2000, I, I mean, I knew, you know, who they are and who I am. You know, I don't know why I was so good at that kind of stuff, you know, but like I said, it's just like simple things like my dad told me. He's like, I don't care, you know, JFK, you're Jesus Christ, or you're the Pope, you know, you still put on one pant leg at a time, you know. You just, it doesn't matter. He ain't no better than you. You're all, you know, we're all equal. We're all the same. You know, just because you got a badge doesn't mean you know, got special powers. You don't throw a lightning bolts. You know, he's still just a man. But yeah, like I said, I just can't understand how that attorney allowed that to continue to go forward. I just, I do not understand. The yeah. attorney did not jump up and down like me and say, "You've got to be kidding me." Name, rank, serial number. I'm done. That's my dad. He's a trustee. I can't disclose the location of anything. Because you know Geneva Conventions clearly states in you know, a world of war. Da 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 da. You know I'm not a member of your family, sir. I'm a member of this family. Do you think I'm a member of your family? Do you think I'm a citizen of something of your family? No, I'm a citizen of my family. And see, that's a piece. Somebody, some guy said that to me the other day. I don't know where he's from, Oklahoma, some ridiculous place. He says to me, uh, something about being a citizen means a member of a city. I said, oh really? So if I'm a citizen, I'm a member of a city. What's the closest city to me? The closest city to me is about 45 miles away. So how could I be a citizen? I said, no. Literally, a citizen is a member of a family. doesn't mean a member of a city. How, how few people on planet Earth probably really live in a city? So I said, no. Where are we getting this word from? It's a member of a city. I don't know. You probably got it from, uh, uh, you know, 1780, 1790, um, you know, after the French Revolution, a member of the city of Paris or whatever, you know, because they always used to say if you watch any kind of old movie. Hey, Citizen Bob. Yes, Citizen Jane. You know, you know, after the steel day, oh, they called each other citizen like crazy. But no, a citizen means a member of a family. So like I said, with like Ian or something like that, if he's a member of your family, you know, he, he, you know, he's not a member of somebody else's family. You know, he's, he, you know, he is of yours. And see, this is what a, people are having a hard time. And I guarantee, like I said, when I was a kid, my dad would tell us, you know, you know, be, you got to be polite to a police officer, but don't give him anything. You know, don't, don't you, you be nice, you play, you say, yes, sir, no, sir. He says, what's your name? I say, what's your name? What do you mean, what's my name? Ain't you a cop? Yeah, ain't you like got a badge? Ain't you like a detective? Ain't you like an investigator? Yeah, you tell me. You tell me what's my name. He said, don't disclose anything to these guys. They're not your friends. They're not here to help you. You know, you're, gonna, you're still going to do as much jail time whether you help these guys or not. He says, so you know what? Make them do their damn job. 
don't make it easy. Don't say nothing. You say, hey, you know what? They put you in the cop. I thought they're getting paid. They're paying you. They're getting paid. Don't you get paid good money to investigate crimes? Ain't you the detective here? Ain't you the smart guy here? Yeah, well, then you tell me what I did. You tell me who was here with me. You tell me what my name is. He says, oh, you're not going to cooperate with me? What, I'm going to help you do your job? No, you're going to help me on the docks? You're going to help me on the loading docks tonight? You're going to come down at 11 o'clock and help me load? No. Well, then why I should help you do your job? He said, don't help him do nothing, man. He ain't here to help you. You know, just you know, tell him to do the damn job. Say, so you ain't going to get nothing out of me. You know, like I said, it was the old New York thing. You know, snitches get stitches. You know, you don't say anything. You don't know nothing about nothing. You know, just keep your mouth shut, and before you know, poof, you're gone. You're out. Why you're out? Because you're on your worst enemy, man. You open your mouth, you say something, you're your own worst enemy. They're going to use everything you say against you, man. There's nothing that you could possibly say that's going to get you out of that situation. So you might as well just sit down and shut the fuck up and let them do their damn job, you know, and just wait for help. And somebody will come and help you, and they'll get you out. You know? But see, that's what I'm saying. Parents don't teach their kids that. You know, when the teacher says this, you know what, you got to talk to the teacher, talk to the parents' counselor, and talk to the principal. You know, my dad was basically up until the point was just say, hey, you know what, the most you can tell this guy is, like, go suck an egg. Other than that, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't really curse him. He says, hey, you know what, go suck an egg. What? Go suck an egg. How much are you going to get out of an egg if you suck it? Nothing. Yeah, well, that's what you're going to get out of me, nothing. So go suck an egg. <laughs> you know, so that was like online in New York, hey, go suck an egg. Why? Go ahead and suck an egg. How much are you going to get out of an egg when you're sucking it? Nothing. Well, that's what you're going to get out of me, nothing. So go suck an egg. <laughs> you know, but that's what I'm saying. It's just, that's the way we were reared. That's the way we were raised. Yeah. So, well, I guess it's going to... tell you, I've learned a great, great deal, but uh, the most of what I've learned is what the time that you've spent and Gus has spent talking to me and helping me, uh, uh, helping me, uh, for want of a better description, in a stand, the workings on their side, and also how uh, defective their thinking is about uh, harm and wrong and right, because they can't plug into any of that stuff. They just don't get it. Yeah, they don't care. They got, they got a job to do. It's like me. I got a job to do, and it's funny. Anybody who works with me, they can say, hey, call me saying the operator's manual says this, the directions say this. I say, oh, yeah, let me see that. Yeah, and I rip it up and I throw it and I, you know, so, yeah, great. I'm going to use a bird cage for bird droppings. I said, well, call this is a safety manual. Said, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, rip that chain guard off that thing. I ain't got time for this. Oh, but call. No, no, look, I got a job to do. I don't give a damn how it gets done. Just do it. And what's funny is they. this is what you were afraid of, too, that they were just so zealous in what they were doing. And I said to you, um, uh, he was like, oh, yeah, but if we do this, I'm do this. This guy's so zealous because you're saying that some lady said, oh, yeah, he's very um what did you say that the lady said he was very zealous or something about his job, passionate or? Extremely zealous at his job, at getting results. Right. So what I say to Paul, it's like Paul got worried. Like, oh, my God, Paul, they're really going to come after me now. I'm going to put this in. They're, they're really going to tighten up the news. They're really going to start kicking ass. I said, no. What they do is they love these zealous guys. They they cheer these zealous guys on. Rah, rah, rah. Go get him, Tiger. Go get him, Tiger. Go get him, Tiger. When a Tiger gets sued... Those guys make a beeline, and they make a, such a wide gap between them and the tiger. Like, um, tiger, um, yeah, I, I'm busy. You can't talk to me right now. What? And that's their boss. It's like, yeah, I, as a matter of fact, um, we're going to have to suspend you for a while. We're going to put you on temporary leave. Uh, yeah, we heard you were being sued. Yeah, you got sued. Uh, yeah, you're indemnified to a bonding company called Travelers, the Travelers Loop with Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, and they found out that you, um, you were sued, and they pulled your bond. What? They pulled your bond. Oh, I didn't know you. Oh, I don't write under a bond. Yeah, I'm right under a bond. So um, we're going to have to, uh, you know, travelers said that they can no longer indemnify you, but if you provide a different uh, indemnify you, we can put you right back on the force. It's like, oh, really? Why, how much does it cost? Oh, well, and the travelers group, they only used to charge us uh, $2.16 a year for you. Oh, really? Oh, that, that's cool. So uh, I just got to get another indemnifier? Yeah, but the next indemnifier you get, they want a $100,000 deposit. Why? They want $100,000 for poverty. Why? Because you're being sued. So see, this is what I'm trying to say. Once those people get sued, their rah-rah fucking bosses and their rah-rah agency, you know, heads tell, go get them, Tiger, go kick ass. Yeah, but then once they get sued, they leave them out to dry. And that's why I tell people, go read Rayleigh versus Reigns. And that's an Alabama case where a cop did the same exact thing, you know, be very aggressive, stop all these car drivers, blah, 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 write up tickets, blah, 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 all this nonsense. He was a good little trooper, good whatever, you know, a uh, cop, whatever. 
he uh, shoots and kills a guy, then they leave him out to dry. They don't even give him uh, an attorney for his trial. You know, they they don't care. And he had to sue the state for, uh, he's like, well, I was acting as a cop at the time of uh, the time I shot the guy. He's like, no, because you shot the guy in the back. You know, that's not what a policeman does. And the guy's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I thought he was going for a gun. Yeah, well, you were also outside of your jurisdiction when you did it. Oh, that's because I was on a high speed pursuit. He's like, yeah, you know what? We're still not going to uh, pay for your attorney. We're still not going to cover your court costs. And, uh, you know, the widow is going to sue you, and she's going to take away everything you've got. And then there was, I think, C6. Um, this is one of the, the six ways that you could actually sue the state government. And uh, that's why I was studying Rayleigh versus Reigns. And then, like, when it, with Alabama, there was, like, four out of six things that the state of Alabama did and the, uh, the agents of Alabama did that gave me the capacity to sue them as a government entity, you know, because it's very hard to sue a government entity. So I really was studying as many cases as I could, and Rayleigh versus Reigns was one of them. And um, this is what Paul was worried about, that he was really going to come after me. And I said, as a matter of fact, Paul, since I made a claim against uh, Mike the Cop, Miss yeah. Anita Harris lady, it has yeah. gotten very, it's gotten very quiet and mellow around here. You know, no more harassment, no more nonsense from these people. My mom went to court last Tuesday. She said, "Man, no more jokes, nobody smiling, nobody high fiving, nobody laughing about what you're doing." She said, "Man, they were all deadly serious." You know, because they were sued. And then, you know, like I said, the next guy gets sued. I can sue the next guy. Sue the next guy. And how are they going to answer? I'd love to hear him say that, we, you know, I failed to state a claim and which relief could be granted. <laughs> As I failed to state a claim, hmm, well, I made a claim that you took my property, Exhibit A, and relief could be granted. Return it. No, I think that's a pretty good claim. You took that which is mine, return it. See, Exhibit A, can you return it? Yes or no? Because you're the one who signed the paperwork. You're the one who petitioned the court to take her away in the first place. So are you the one, are you do you have the capacity to withdraw your petition? I bet you do. So you were saying, you called me up all morning. I mean, we were going on and on and on for hours, back and forth, back and forth, sending paperwork. Yeah. And you finally finished it up, and it looked pretty damn good. Okay. And, and I, I liked it. I said, go ahead, dump it in their lap, see what happens. So explain to them other people a little bit what happened, because like, we were very, um, I was very animated at times, let's put it that way with you. <laughs> <laughs> to get the damn job done and just get the damn thing in. We need, uh, we need... We need a good beating once in a while, Carl, because we got to we got to march in line to common law, not to uh, where our mind's been trained from a young age. Okay. But um, I drive out to the courthouse, and um, I, well, I called out there, and they told me the fee was going to be 150 bucks, 175 if you want them served. And uh, and I thought, well, I've got I had two with me, you know, I had enough to do two two suits with me, uh, two uh, claims. Uh, I got one of Ben's claims ready too. Yeah, but I just we just did the one. We did um Yeah, but I had Frank Frank and who was your Frank is the one we had. Okay. And uh but I had the real simple one for Ben Reddy also. And I thought, well I'll go down there and uh, before I get down there, uh let's see what the game is. And I get down there, a uh, beautiful courthouse, I mean just real nice, out of the way, uh great people. You can tell the whole environment down there, they like to be left alone. They're, they're the same kind of people that, that you see up in your neck of the woods. They're away from right. the city. They don't want to be bothered by anybody. They have a nice little thing going on, little, uh, you know, town square and whatever. I go in the courthouse, and uh, they got the clerk's office as you go in, or one of the clerk's offices, and I said, you know, I'm looking for uh, for this office. And they say, oh, you'll need, to, uh, you'll need to go to the end of the hall and down the stairs, and you need to ask for, and they gave me a name, and I went in there. And I go down there, and the lady said, uh, well, we're inundated with cases in our end of it. You need to go up to the third floor and file up there. And I said, but you do understand this is the court I want. And she said, yeah, go up there. I'll, I go up there, and I meet the clerk and master of the courthouse and the clerk for that uh, for that court on that floor. And I said, uh, and the, I showed my documents to the clerk, and I said, uh, I, I need to file this today. I brought three copies so you can stamp them all and just give me a couple of copies back and I'll pay the filing fee. The woman who was the clerk struck out something on the top of the paper. She struck out my name from court. Oh, fall, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay. 
Because I jumped your shit when you called me up. You yeah. said you were in circuit court, and you said you missed a very important thing. You, why did you have to go to the third floor instead of filing in circuit? They, they said at the time, they said that they had too many cases and too much caseload down there, and they could not get it filed today, even though I had, like, two hours to spare if I waited. And um, the woman who was the actual clerk for the court had a stack of files on her desk, and she had another lady helping her. And I, I just said, I said, ma'am, this is really important. I, I said, uh, I, don't, I don't care if I have to wait. And she said, you do understand we can't give you, uh, we'd be unable to give you a, a trial by jury quickly. And I said, I don't care if it takes months to get the trial by jury. I need the papers signed today. And she said, you can have, they looked at the papers. And then when they looked at the papers, they said, you can have the same court on the third floor. So I was mistaken. I thought, oh, yeah. you, were, you were pissed. You were like, you were worried you were going to piss that they were like blowing you off? Yeah, I thought they were blowing me off because the circuit court was downstairs and the chancery court was upstairs. And you'd kind of warned me not to go to chancery court. Just like you said, don't never go to chancery court and take your chance. So I go up there and I'm really apprehensive. And I get my papers up to the clerk there. And she struck the first copy. She struck my name right out the top of the thing where it said, my name court. And I said, hold on a moment. And the clerk and master was there. And uh, I looked at him and I said, can you, can you help me out here? I said, this has to be filed the way, it, the way it's written. I can't have any uh, changes on these documents. All right, so you had poor court going at, so at first you had poor court going at circuit court, right? Correct. Okay, and they struck out your name, said no poor court here, right? Correct. And they wrote in there, and you were where my name was. Right, you were pissed. I was pissed. And I looked at the clerk and master, and I said, look, I need your help. He was an older guy. And I said, I need your help. I said, this has to be filed correctly. There can be no changes to this paperwork. I said, because the guy I'm going after, he will find a loophole, and I will never get the money that he owes me. I'll never get the return of my property. I said, you've got to help me out here. I said, I heard you guys were really good at what you do. You've got to help me out. And uh, he said, you have another copy of your paperwork? I said, I've got two more, but I can't take no chances. He stood right behind the clerk as she was entering it in the computer, and she was going to enter it differently. And he said, no, give the man what he wants. Tell what he wants. He's clear on his papers what he wants. He wants a common law court. He could see it. The clerk and master could see it. Yeah. And he said, he wants a common law court. And we're going to have to let the judge know that he needs a common law court, not a standard court like we would normally do here. And he went through a couple of details with me. He said, you don't want a trial by jury? I said, that's correct. He said, you want us to record everything? So court of record? I said, that's correct. I said, but I want it a common law court. This is not a chancery court issue. I said, this is to hold court in your building down here and to have your uh, appointed judge to be the, uh, the man who sits in the middle of it all. And uh, he said, I know exactly what you want. And he stood behind the clerk, and uh, she put something in the computer wrong. He said, no, you can't do that. He said, give the man what he wants. His papers are right. He's clear on what he wants. Give him what he wants. Stamp him with a case number. And I said, now, you do understand I don't want the civil rights complaint or anything else. I said, I want my money back, and this is all about the law. So, 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 so do you understand why I sell people just do it the damn way I tell you to effing do it. Because yep. then you'll see a master of the court will say, hey, this shit is correct. He did it exactly the way it needs to be done. Who, or this thing, the Crown Court in Canada, who taught you how to do this? Who knew how to do it correctly? How did you, who figured this out? Because once you figure it out and it's in the writing, it's over. They're like, it's just correct. What? It's correct. You know, like you said, the master kept on calling, no, don't do that. Yeah, he pulled his he, own clock up. Right, he specifically wrote it this way. He knows what he's doing, or yet, at least you yeah, convinced him and you what the hell you were doing, enough to get the master to think, hey, Paul, you, you were a freaking uh, little genius over here, you know? And can you imagine if you really do study this stuff and you get really good at it, you know, how much fun it's really going to be? So go ahead and just keep saying what the master said, whatever. You know, the master, you know, I said to him, I said, do you have any problem with the paperwork I've got or how I want it filed? He said, no, not at all. And he looked over at the clerk and he said, 
give the man his case number, and I said, you do understand I don't want a civil rights complaint, I don't want it moving, I don't want anybody adjusting any of my paperwork, I want it the way it's written. He said, absolutely. He said, you'll get what you want. He said, and we don't change anything here. You get a case number, you get a case file, and that's it. He said, we'll take your money. That's the only thing we'll take. And I said, well, I'll pay you in cash. I said, you take cash. He said, as long as you've got an ID. He was joking, of course. And um, he, uh, and I said, you know, if you do a good job for me on this, I said, I've got two of his friends I want to, I want to file papers (laughs) on next week. (laughs) And I said, and he looked at me, I said, oh, I'm serious. He said, and you don't mind the 300, and it was three, it wasn't 150 votes, it was 320. And I said, right. you don't mind, he said, you don't mind the $329 fee? I said, no. I said, I'll pay the fee if you guys can do it. He said, do you think it will go to trial? I said, hand on heart, one of these three men has been very difficult to deal with. I said, but hand on heart, one of them knows right from wrong. I said, I believe that he's going to do the right thing. And, uh, and he said, well, he said, well, however it turns out, it turns out. He said, uh, he said, if you need an audience with the judge to let him know what it is you want in your court, he said, just give me a call and we'll set it up. He said, and uh, I'll have to ask the judge without you present because there can be no impropriety, you know, between parties or anything. And I just want the judge to know that I haven't spoke to you, you know, and not the other not the other party. I said, that's fine. All right. That's an ex parte hearing. But that's what I was trying to say to you. When you were telling me this on the phone, I was livid, man. I was like going bananas on you. And I was like, no, you, you, you look, Paul, you're going to have to get something called a precipice day, uh, a preliminary hearing, a preliminary trial. You're going to have something between you and the judge. And you're going to have to send them a note. And you're going to have to send the judge say, look, this is what I require. When I show up today, remember what I was telling you? Do you remember what I said to you? What you require to send to the judge? What that you want him to do? So there's so it's crystal clear that when you actually attend into that you're present in that courtroom. Do you remember what I told you that you basically have to write to the and you told me to scribble something down and you'll make sure it gets to the judge. But can you kind of remember what I told you that but you, you know needs to be sent to the judge? Some something that the the jurors would decide and that the judge was. Am I right in saying an arbitrator? Well, he's just going to bear witness to what the jury rendered that day. The judgment that the jury rendered. He was yeah. just going to be there to bear witness to swear. I saw Paul present his case. I saw the other man present his case. I saw the jury come back with their verdict. I was there that day. This is what actually happened on this day. The jury tended this verdict on this day. What the actual verdict is, it's none of the concern of the magistrate or the judge or the clerk. Anybody could basically just bear witness on behalf of the court that this is what happened on this day and he'll swear it was true. What's funny is if you watch some like old cowboy movies, right? Watch some old cowboy movies, and you'll see this guy who is the judge. Okay, this is real common law stuff. If you watch the old old cowboy movies from the 1940s, 1930s, 90 percent of the time the judge was sleeping, sleeping, because he was just there to bear witness. He didn't really give a damn what the testimony was. He didn't really give a damn what the hell was going on. He was just there to make sure you spoke. You were done. You finished. Okay, good. Now, the other side speaks. Okay, you're done. You're finished. Okay, great. Jerry, you know, have at it. Go, you know, suppress yourself. You know, go sit in the back room somewhere and come out with a verdict. So it was so funny. If you watch the old cowboy movies, they usually just had an old guy in there who just had a bare witness. You know, he doesn't give a damn what the hell's being said. He doesn't care. You know, he just falls asleep, takes a nap, and if somebody starts laughing in the courtroom, he opens his eyes and says, well, what, what's going on? Well, who's, who's turn? Is it? Who's supposed to be speaking? Oh, you are? Oh, okay, okay. Are you done? Where, where are we? Can somebody tell me? And then I'll say to the judge, the bailiff will say, oh, judge, you know, yeah, he was saying this, and he's like, oh, the judge will laugh. Oh, that's funny. That's a good one. Yeah, but yeah, but we got to take this serious, folks, and uh, let's move on. Whose turn was it to speak? Okay, go ahead. Just keep keep talking, and then he'll go take a nap again. Down here in Virginia, when I ask the uh, attorneys, it says, Where? And it's when you hold like a quarter bracket like that. And uh, it, doesn't the judge sit to your left? And he says, No, the judge sits behind us, and we present our case to the jury. I said, Oh, okay. I thought most times the witness was over to the left. He says, Well, that might be in some courthouse, but the federal courthouse down here, the United States courthouse down here, the federal courthouse down here, the judge sits behind everybody when you require. You know, like a court of record, where the magistrate is independent of the tribunal. He sits behind everybody. You know, he'll just yell up, hey, 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 it's not your turn to talk. Hey, just stop. You know, the other side, hey, you know, he'll be like the umpire, 
a tennis match. He'll be outside of the court, outside of the net. You know, he's not standing in the middle of the court, in the middle of the net. He has two tennis balls over the guy's head. No, he's, he's to the side. You know, he's just an impartial witness and saying, hey, 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 that was out of bounds. Hey, hey, you know, your turn. You know, he's just basically making sure everybody behaves. So that's great that the court master said that. So I'll write something for you, obviously, what you need to get before that judge. So when he sees it, he'll say, holy shit, this guy is like confident. This guy really knows what we're going to do here. He has an idea what he wants, and he's going to require this of me, and I better do it. You know, I better, this guy sounds like he, uh, he's not somebody to mess with. This when I sound like super genius. When I when I told the clerk master, I said, "Look, you do me a good job on this. I got two two of his friends I want to bring down here." He said, "I'll take your money. Don't worry about that." <laughs> and, and, and what did, what did he say about the judge? What kind of demeanor does this judge have? Asked, I said, uh, "I said, you know, I said, I don't I don't know how many judges you got down here or anything else." And I said, uh, "I said, tell me a little bit about the judge." I said, uh, "I don't want to know his name." I said, "But just how do you do things down here?" And he said, oh, he's an old-time judge, and he understands real law. And I said, you mean real law, not 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 all this other stuff that they go on with uh, these days. He said, no, we, we like to live old school down here. He said he likes real law. So he kind of said that he's going to like to see your case, or? Yeah, I think I think so. And uh, don't forget, yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, because you told me, you said the, um, the master said, um, he says, oh, yeah, he loves he loves hearing old-time law like yours. He likes going back and doing it the old-fashioned way. He doesn't like it, the new stuff. He actually likes doing the old law. He does. Yeah, he does. I tell people, there are judges who enjoy doing this old stuff. Like when I went to England, when I put the notice in there with two sentences, the judge just looked at me, and <laughs> he looked at the prosecutor and said, you know, do you see this notice? No, you could, you, you 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 better not, because I don't either. He said, but there's a man over there that I don't recognize, and I'm sure he does. And uh, you better go out in the hallway and settle this with this man, because it's over. And and Bali and then we started jumping up and down, say, see, he doesn't say he see. I said, dude, it's over. Did you hear the judge say it's over? But it's over. The judge knows what I'm doing. I'm throwing the old school rules down, and since it's not outlawed, it's still in law. I'm using old law. And this guy's like, oh, this guy just did the old uh, two sentence. I'm done. Uh, you know, not Philip Lowers. I'm not going to go on and drag this on for 16 years. No. Two sentences, I'm done. Watch when I make my claim. It's going to be one sentence, and I'm freaking done. You know, I said, it, it, it shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have had to go to the claim. The Crown Prosecutor should have came out in the hallway, which he did, and he did talk to me, which he did, but he had absolutely no clue what I was doing. He just, like, looked at me, you know, the, uh, what the hell are you talking about? I don't have a clue. You know, but like you said, at least the master that you're dealing with, you're going to have a lot of fun because you have a judge who actually knows what's going on. And now you just got to tighten up your game a whole bunch of notches because, like, at a scale of 1 to 10, you're probably a 2 or 3. Yeah, you know, no, you, got, you got to just tighten up your game a whole bunch of notches because if you do, you'll have a lot of fun. If you don't, the judge will say, oh, damn, I was hoping the guy who knew what he was doing. Oh, my gosh, Jesus. I was so hoping that this guy knew when I asked him, do you want me to place the witness on the stand? No, I don't want nothing from any man. I require. No, 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 no. God provides all. You know, so I don't know how good you're going to be like that, how I do it, where I find every little damn word, and I will straighten that judge out. I will straighten that clerk out. I will straighten him out. Say, nope, go straight this way. No, no, don't take me down that legal path. No, 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 you, no, we're going this way. The king wants us nothing. You know, oh, um, uh, oh, hell no. No, the king doesn't want anything from himself. No, 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 you're going to, no, you, I'm required of you to do it. I do this for you, you do this for me, this is how this works. No, 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 no. This, no, no, you, you're going to know your position, your status. I know what I do, you know what you need to do, and this is the way we're going to vote. You know, don't, don't, don't think you're going to take over my court. Oh, no, 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 this, that ain't going to happen. It's a lifestyle for me because I've been doing this nonsense my whole life, having an attitude my whole life. And uh, people would say, well, you know, it's, a, it's like the attorney wrote in um, at the trial two weeks ago that my mom was at. He said, your son has a very uh, bad track record of accepting authority and accepting uh, authoritarian figures. And I said to my mom, say, authority literally means dictator. If you go to edamonline.org or .com, whatever edamonline is, and you type in the word authority, 
it'll say dictator. It's like, yeah, I think I have a very hard problem with dictator because dictator is why the Lenses left Germany because they were, the dictator was going to kill Uncle John because he was born a runt and he grew up to be six feet something tall, but at the time of the birth, he was a runt and they had to run out of this country to save the baby. So, yeah, I have a hard time dealing with dictators, with dictatorships. I have a real hard time doing that. I'll tell you, you know, um, you touched on something a couple of weeks ago, and it's kind of related to everything that's going on, both for you and me, Carl. But um, there was a time when you were dealing with Alabama where you had to find a different venue to where they had their, quote, authority. And so you had to move things around. And I made the mistake of trying to file in the same courthouse back in November as where I think the government were going to file. Oh, that was yeah, mistake. you were going to go on freaking uh, United States District Court. Yeah. That was hysterical. Yeah, that's right. I want bananas on you for that, too. Well, it was my mistake, but the thing still sat there, apparently. It's still, you can still find it. Yeah, and, yeah, but I, I kept trying to warn people, you've got to go to these little mom-and-pop courthouses. You know, stop going to this what you think is these monolith, uh, you know, you know, uh, the end all, the be all, United States District Courts. It's like, no, no, no. You're going to get a real court and real justice if you go to a mom and pop courthouse. Especially, especially like me, if you go and find a a town that needs the business and they like to be left alone. These people, they don't like to be messed with. They, they're kind of similar people to uh, where you are. My town's like a hybrid town because we're closer to Nashville. And we have a courthouse here in town. But these these guys who live out in the country, they want to be left alone. They're not interested in somebody dictating to them how they live their life. It's going to be the perfect jury for me. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I was trying to say with uh, the United States District Courts, you, if so many people are enamored just by the name and the symbolism and the, and the big, mighty eagle and the thunderbolts and the shields and and, oh, look at the size of this building. Oh, my God, this is a real justice we're going to get here. Oh, man, look at the power and the authority and the might of the United States government. Wow, we're going to throw thunderbolts at this guy. He's going to crack pickles. You know, and I'm like, no, no, no. Go to mom and pop courthouses, you know. they got this, just as much power. they got as much authority as uh, these um, United States district courts. You know, there's the commodity clause, a com- comedy clause, so the C-O-M-I-T-Y clause. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, the credit clause. They have just a, any competent jurisdiction, any competent, you know, you know, whatever ruling is made, it could be made in a, a town or county, whatever place that you go, you know, in the country, man, they'll, they'll accept the full faith and credit clause or, like I said, a, a comment, comment clause, you know, it's, a, you know, a, a, when you have a, it's just like with this gay marriage thing, you can get married now and anyway, you get married in California and they have to recognize it and they, you know, whatever ruling you get, no matter where you go, if it's within the United States territory, you know, it will be recognized as a legitimate court order or a le- legitimate judgment. It will be considered bona fide. It's good. You went before a competent tribunal? Yes. You went before a competent court? Yes. You got a ruling? Yes. You got a judgment? Good. It, it works no matter where you go. So why in the world would you want to go to the United States District Court when the United States government employees are the ones that are pursuing you? Why would you want to run into their backyard and say, help What's the odds of that happening? Yeah, the, 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 it's it's a you know it's a stacked deck. It's it's like playing the casino house rules. Right, but at one time before you met me, you thought it was great because look at the might of the United States government. Before you met me, is there is that the reason why you went towards the United States uh, courts instead well, of going to the local mom and pop court? I mean, who advised you, or what made you lead to, led you to believe that the United States court system was the place to go. What, what what was your train of thought there? What made you believe that that was the right way to do it? There was two parts to that. I didn't have enough background, and I'd looked at some of your papers online, but it was in talking to Donald, he said, go ahead and get the claim filed. Get the claim filed at the United States District Court? I've made an assumption. Okay, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, but that's what I'm saying. That's what Donald told you to do. I'm saying go to the United States District Court. Yeah, and, uh, and obviously I went up there and paid the 400 and some dollars and, and all the rest of that bogus stuff that went on up there because the chief judge went and crapped on the case, you know? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Um, what did you guys basically do? We we filed a claim, but it never got served, and it's 
It may even be sat there right now. It was kind of a basic claim to get the property back. Uh, had a couple of, uh, I made the, well, I'm not going to go into the mistakes because the thing's still up there, I believe. But uh, a couple of the mistakes no. that you knew about today. What did it basically look like? What did it basically, did, it, did, did I ever see anything that you wrote that it basically looked like what you did at the United States District Court? Maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't think so. I sent it by email, but I don't think you had a chance to look at it at the time. I'm all sure I didn't because just the way you described what you were doing, I was like, this is a total waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as soon as I hear people say they went to the United States District Court, it's like, oh, these are them, but a big eagle and a big flag and a big marble building and a, and a teak wood furniture and the mahogany walls. And, yeah, he's just, oh, you know, you know, I got to get him out of this, this ridiculous belief. I was like, look, go find mom and pop. Go find a little old judge. Go find an 80-year-old guy who just loves this old shit. You know, he'll he'll fucking play with you. It's like, oh, my God, finally, finally, we can go do some old school shit. Man, I love it. Like, can you imagine me being a judge? And then people are coming with me with this legal crap. I'm like, oh, my God, another fucking attorney talking with another fucking attorney, and these two saps are just sitting there getting milk dry by this fucking, these two stupid attorneys. How can these people be that stupid to just let that attorney just milk the hell out of them? You know, I look at both those saps, and, you know, it's three-piece suits and ties with an attorney. I say, man, these people are so stupid. Why can't they just fucking talk for themselves? Why can't they just act on their own behalf? And now you're coming in and say, oh, boy, this guy's going to act on his own behalf. Hey, this is going to be fucking great. Finally, a man in my courtroom. It's just like what happened to Brian Bond. The judge stopped the court and said, hey, to the bailiff, guess what we got? What? We got a man. What? We got a man in court today. Really? The judge said to the bailiff, when was the last time we had a man in court? 1989, 1991? He's like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, remember his old man, Harold? Yeah, he was the last man who appeared here. So like I said, for what? Whatever that was, 15 years? You know, 20 years, 25 years, whatever? There was no man that ever appeared, no man appeared in his court. You see, what a unique experience it is for a judge to actually have a man appear nowadays. You know, 100 years ago, that's all that appeared. Like I said, watch those old Wild Wild West shows, you know. That's all that appeared back then. You know, who's the man that brings the claim? I'm the man who brings the claim that this man's done wrong. Bring your claim forth before the court, you know. Have to read it before the court. I, man, claim, da da da, it's done wrong, da da da, you know, trespass, he stole my cattle. Like, okay, he's, you know, says I. Who says I did not or did do it? You know, it's just amazing watching the old cowboy movies. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm doing like the yippee kaye old cowboy movies. I'll tell you the vision I got when I was sat, I, I was sat, you know, getting the papers sorted out and the clerk and master leaning over the shoulder of the woman who was typing in the computer. And I, I got this vision, and it will give a little bit of thing. And I, I got thinking about your Trans Am that you have, ah, about black. all these Toyota Prius that are on the road. And I thought, uh -oh. you know, the hundred thousand people driving the Prius, and here's Carl going to barrel down the right, the fast lane, and drive a real vehicle. And that's what the judge wants to do: is drive a real car. He doesn't yeah. want to be one of the sheep. He wants somebody in his room that's going to give him a bit of excitement. Right. It's going to be a little fun. I mean, it's like. Like I said, he was like on the Brian Bonner. The judge was giving him so much leeway. The judge was like saying, are you sure you don't want to prosecute the prosecutor? He's like, <laughs> what? You mean I could do that? It's like, it says right here. That's what you want to do. Is it does? Yeah, it does say that, Brian. Well, like I said, Brian only talked to me uh, from, uh, you know, 4 o'clock until 5 o'clock one afternoon on Sunday, and he had to be in court on uh, Monday morning at uh, 8.30. So he really didn't have much time to talk. So, like I said, you've got a lot more time to talk to me. So, you're going to hopefully just, you know, the judge will see, oh, my God, i got a man here. You know, I'm, this is going to be fun. Don't disappoint the guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, he, he's all being, he's going to be all thrilled. He's like, finally, finally, I get maybe one more before I die, one more before I retire. Oh, my God. Well, you, you know, know, the way, the way he sees it, he's, he, he's, got, he's got a ticket for an Elvis show now on his docket. Right, he, right. He wants to see Elvis perform. Right, or the last time the Beatles are going to perform. What? The Beatles, the last remaining Beatles are going to perform? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, like 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 Ringo, you better not die, buddy. You, come on, Paul McCartney, you better not die. I know you're 80 years old. Don't die on me. <laughs> you know, three, three more months, and, you know, we get to see the last show of the Beatles. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You tell, I don't want you to disappoint the guy. You know, it's like I, when I went to England. Oh, man. Like I said, uh, even the, the interpreter for the job, he said that. He says, I would have never believed it with my own eyes, unless I seen it with my own eyes, that somebody could actually beat the crown. 
He says, not only did somebody beat the Crown, he says that somebody beat the Crown in Crown Court, and he wasn't even an attorney. Well, it's even worse, he's from the States. <laughs> he says, there's no way anybody could have possibly told me that that day could have ever happened. He says, tell your friends in the United States, I appreciate it to watch what happened. He says, it was a lot of fun. So like I said, when it, the judge gets to see this stuff, to them, it's, it is a lot of fun. You know, when you can actually see somebody perform. You know, performing, performing live. That, that's man on stage, man. Yeah, man's on stage. You're shitting me. No. Oh, wow, we're going to get like a real drama, the real blood and guts, the real fight, the real knock them down, the real it's, we're all in.